Welcome to Build Your Dream Network. I'm Kelly Hoey. I see people struggling to connect effectively all the time. So I created this podcast to help you master your network building needs. Whether you're seeking a new job, looking for a promotion, or scaling your business, you need a network and you're in the right place to get the advice you need. And don't worry, my advice is real. It's actionable and practical because it's the advice I follow and is what has transformed my career from the traditional to the unexpected. So let's get started. The networking gap. The career advantage some people have over others because of who they know or who their parents know or where they live or went to school or where they landed a first crucial job, acknowledging the networking gap exists and trying to do something to close it. Well, LinkedIn has posted about this. It's why my friend Patrick Sullivan launched the mentoring platform Bonsai and why, frankly, startup accelerator programs are so valuable for founders who are lacking the connections to investors. But the networking gap I want to address is how to make networking more accessible. In many ways, networking online is a great equalizer. However, challenges with internet connections, depending on where you are geographically located, or the cost of home internet service, well, this quickly reveals that it's not such an equalizer after all. Then there is the structure of online events. Which platforms offer closed captioning for the hearing impaired? Which online conferences and events have included sign language interpreters? I ask these questions as I have received queries from Build Your Dream Network readers or podcast listeners who are wondering what they have to do to fit in at networking events what they have to do to change. Whether it was the Ivy League law student who relied on a sign language interpreter when in large conversations, or the wheelchair user who feels her wheelchair is a barrier to building professional connections. Time to take a moment, folks, and ask yourself if you're making networking opportunities accessible. And related to that, how you're pulling or inviting people into conversations rather than leaving them on the sidelines, wondering how they're going to break into the club. Make some changes to start closing the networking gap. For online events, one suggestion is hire a sign language interpreter for your keynote sessions. Another suggestion Invest in closed captioning before you post the video replays of sessions on YouTube or Vimeo. Thirdly, think about what platforms you could use to deliver content via text or instant messaging so those with internet bandwidth challenges can also participate. We can complain about being zoomed out, but what about people who have never had the chance to zoom in at all? My personal request for all the product innovation with live video streaming and the proliferation of platforms rushing to serve the conference and events industry is to make closed captioning a standard feature, not an after-the-fact add-on. And why? Why isn't there a sign language bot? There's a pop-up, how can I help you? bot I'd like to see on every live streaming platform. As we look ahead to in-person networking events, don't default to what worked in the past. Plan for a more inclusive networking future. What worked in the past for many business networking events were end-of-the-day cocktails in beautiful but noise-filled venues. The last one I attended was at the New York Public Library. The venue was dark, and I forgot to bring the glasses I wear for distance reading, and those really would have helped as I attempted to navigate the room. The conversation reverberated off the walls, so you couldn't hear, let alone be heard, without shouting. 
There was no seating. The tables were all high tops, which are great if you're someone like me, able-bodied and stand about five foot eight. How is anything about that event, which is not atypical, closing the networking gap by making it accessible to someone who is in a wheelchair or a little person or suffers from chronic pain or is hearing or sight impaired? Or how is the event appealing for someone who likes to have one or two quality conversations? Overlooking these details is why networking is dreaded, and they also expand the networking gap. Beyond the choice of physical location, and this equally applies to the online conversations we're having more of on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, for example. Ask yourself how, how you're pulling or inviting others into the conversations you're having. This is my networking request for all of us. Think about how to invite others in. If we'd all invest in doing that, then we could all stop worrying about the good icebreaker questions or how to enter networking conversations. If you're at an in-person event and you see someone standing on the edge of the conversation, close the networking gap by inviting them in. Online, when you see someone liking your tweets or posts or commenting on an update, respond. Take the initiative to invite them into your conversation. Perhaps with a little thought and proactively making a few small shifts in our networking behaviors, we can close the networking gap in just a little. Let me know what steps you take this week to close the networking gap. I'm on Twitter at J.K. Hoey. I'll see you next week. Thank you. For listening. Thank you for listening to Build Your Dream Network. Stay connected and don't miss a networking insight by subscribing to the podcast. And while you're there, I'd love you to rate and review the show too. Are you looking for more networking advice? Pick up a copy of my book, Build Your Dream Network. It's your guide to modern networking. I'd like to hear your networking questions, tips, and ideas. Connect with me via my website, jkellyhoey.co. You'll find links to all my social media accounts, plus a contact form to email me your questions. I'm Kelly Hoey, and I'll be back again next week to tackle your networking challenges.